The pundits have us believe that the green shoots we've been seeing suggest that we'll have a thriving economy um, later this year. We're more cautious. First of all, the green shoots we've been seeing are mostly fixtures. The stock market going up may be a leading indicator, but it's certainly not a fact of things that have improved. The policymakers that say things are going better is mostly hearsay that we hope things are getting better. And the strong bank earnings we have seen are not too much of a surprise given that all their losses are guaranteed. Instead, let's look at a couple of facts and headwinds that might cause real trouble. In particular, let's zoom in at the printing press, at the Federal Reserve. Most of you have heard that the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve has more than doubled. Well, you've heard that for some time. And while the Federal Reserve has committed to printing much more money, it hasn't really done much of that in recent months. Now, that may sound as a surprise to some of you, but some of the Federal Reserve programs have been running out, some of the commercial paper support programs and some of the other facilities. Uh, by all means, we do believe other programs will continue to ramp up. But in the last couple of months, um, there has been a stagnation at the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. If you take into account now that a lot of monetary policy takes about six to nine months to work through the system and then zoom back to what happened last September, last October, then the rally in the stock market is suddenly not so surprising anymore that the massive stimulus, the massive liquidity injection worked its way into the system. That's one of the reasons why the market bounced back and that's one of the reasons we had all these green shoot theories. But since then, or not just since then, actually since early this year, the Federal Reserve on a net basis hasn't been doing so much printing. And if you map that out to the future, it may be that later this year, in particular this fall, um, we might yet again get, get, get a credit crunch. We may get a credit crunch because despite this elevated level that the Federal Reserve has now, and by all means it hasn't mopped up the liquidity, but we are remain at a very high level. We are remaining at a very high level because we've been fighting market forces. We've been trying to adjust, or the Federal Reserve has been trying to adjust, uh, to, to, to prevent the market forces from adjusting. And now add to that a couple of headwinds. Foremost, that the policy programs implemented are extremely inefficient. The Federal Reserve is substituting private sector activity rather than um, encouraging it. So of course corporations stay alive when the Federal Reserve steps in, but a private sector participant will have no interest in joining the feed because the prices are, are distorted. Warren Buffett says he cannot compete um, with the prices um, offered by institutions backed by the government. Uh, and similarly, foreigners may not have an interest in buying U.S. debt um, if the Federal Reserve goes in, buys that debt, and with that um, causes these securities to be overpriced. We all rejoice at the low interest rates that may result, but there's a flip side of that, and that nobody else may be interested in buying these securities. On the federal side, side um, the, um, the stimulus package has been most inefficient. Um, when you give a handout to somebody in need, that person is more likely to save than when you give a handout to businesses that is more likely to invest the money. Good intentions, but inefficiently applied programs. On the state side, um, the states are in desperate need of money. So when the states get a handout, well, they tend to put it into um, stuffing the holes that they have. And so now you add to that a massive funding need. The federal government needs to raise a record amount of debt. The summer months are slower months, so we can expect a lot of supply to come on the market. On the state side, we'll see more supply in the market, and not only to speak of the state side in general, the California IOUs become due on October 2nd. On the corporate side, there will be massive supply. And so we have this combination that the Fed stimulus um, seems to be fizzling, and the Fed had a good reason for that, by the way. The Fed wanted to see whether its massive injection was working and um, whether it needed to do more. Now, this October, after many months of pausing, by all means, we do believe the Fed might panic and do more. And this time around, um, the Fed will be far more efficient because the programs are in place and it just needs to push a few buttons. But as a consequence also, as this credit crunch may come back, we don't see the flight back into treasuries as we saw a year ago. The balance sheet of the U.S. government has deteriorated since then. Other governments have also taken st uh, steps to guarantee their banking systems. And as a result, as the money might be more cautious, it won't just clearly go into U.S. Treasuries, it will go to various places. At the same time, the Fed will push the 
uh, button on the printing press much faster, much more aggressively. That's our view in any way. Um, and as a result, um, we will see money being applied against the system. So expect a lot of instability. We believe that the dollar may suffer substantially if the Federal Reserve is going to buy U.S. Treasuries aggressively. But foremost, um, don't think that this credit crunch is over. Indeed, the risk of credit crunch due is quite severe, and we believe that this fall might be a time to be particularly concerned about it. We are uh, Merck Investments, the manager of the Merck Heart and the Asian Currency Fund. Please subscribe to this video and to our newsletter, the Merck Insights newsletter at MerckFund.com.